Here we go. It's time for Scooney G's Daily Dose Podcast. Come on, y'all. Turn up. Who's with me? Uh. Yeah. Come on. Come on. On today's episode, we have Craig Boogie Brockman in the house. OMG. How did, how did we even get this guy on here? Let me bring to you, everybody, the incomparable Mr. Craig Brockman. Bring him in, Craig. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. How you doing, my man? Here with my special guest, Mr. Craig Brockman. What's up, Craig? What's going on, my brother? How All right, how you been, man? I'm wonderful, man. It's so good to see you, bro. Like, I like to start this off with you by saying, do you remember how we met? Uh, yeah, my brother brought me over to your house, and you guys were rehearsing for some rock stuff, and then I was like, oh, this guy is crazy. <laughs> but that studio was crazy, your house was nice, we were overlooking the city, yeah. So you're act he's actually talking about uh, when I lived up in Mount Washington, I had a recording studio up there, and the way that it worked out is that the recording studio really wasn't that busy. So I said, you know, how can I get my studio busy? So I started offering free lessons to kids and it just got real busy, you know, with the kids. So speaking of kids, you know, we're doing this charity event for Kids Rock Studio tomorrow. Tell me your experience. How did you get started in music yourself? Well, of course in high school, I mean, not even high school, elementary, I started playing trumpet in a band. Trumpet was my first instrument. I got bad grades in the sixth grade. My dad took it from me. And I was like, well, dad, you can't take the piano out the living room. So every time I go get him a cup of water, go walk back to the, take him his, his water and go I'm like, hey, let me sit down. Hey, I can put these notes together. Instead of one note, I'm putting fingers together and there's a chord happening. I'm like, hey, this is cool. So you figured it out yourself? By ear. You didn't take no lessons? Not at that time. What? I took lessons after that. But I figured out, uh, I figured this is less groove tonight. It was, that was the song that I learned, like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, hey, that's cool. Wow. Kind of similar to me. I was, I remember my parents, they put me in piano lessons, and I would go, I think I was eight or nine years old, and put the sheet music out. The teacher would put the sheet music out, and I, I was like faking like I was reading it. I was like, can you play it for me one time? Right. And she would play it, and then I would just. Cheat. Cheating. Yeah, just playing it by ear. Just playing it by ear. I heard it, and then I'll make a mistake, like, oh, yeah, but I'm looking at the chart, but I'm really playing what I've heard. And, and then she tricked me one day. She, like, turned it upside down. She said, okay, now read it. And I was like, because you're not reading. You haven't been reading that, have you? <laughs> I, I did the same thing. <laughs> Good, so I'm not alone. So, you know, I am so connected with kids. I, I just feel it's my passion to mentor these kids. So when I was in my neighborhood and I was a young kid, um, the older musicians in my neighborhood kind of took me under their wing Same. and kept me out of the streets. A lot of my friends got in trouble. Same for me. Rested. And, but because of these OGs that kind of took me under, it kept me, it kind of kept me out of, I didn't even realize it at the time, but it kept me out of trouble. And I'm learning music. How, how was your experience? It's pretty much the same experience. Okay. And then I was in church a lot too, but. Ah. The OG still was like, after church, go practice. Don't come over here with us. Okay. So that was cool. Wow. I was mad at the time, but I, it, it saved my life. Exactly. I mean, at that time, like you said, we just want to run with our homies, right? Mm -hmm. And here, here the OGs kind of have a little vision. Like, because usually what happens is that that happened to them. Somebody took them under their wing. So that's what we're doing with Kids Rock Studio. We're, we're taking kids under our wing and kind of keeping them out, trying to keep them out of harm's way by getting them involved in music. So here's a great story. We were just talking about this in the back. When I met you at the studio, people always talk about stuff they've done, right? And I'm right. like, eh, you take it, yeah, this is Hollywood. <laughs> but a few days later, I'm watching the NBA All-Star Game. All-Star Game, 2013. 2013, that's it was perfect. And I'm like, wait a minute, who's that guy on keyboards? That guy was just at 
my studio and it was you, right? Yep, tell us later. tell us a little bit about that experience. Oh man. First of all, we were playing with Kendrick Lamar and it was like that was amazing to me because I've done a lot of tours and shows, but that particular show, they had me on a riser that started from the flat floor and I ended up probably 50 feet in the air playing my keys with no straps on. So I'm like, I gotta be careful even though I'm up here dancing. <laughs> up there boogie. But I had fun, it was crazy. That was a crazy set, man. I really enjoyed and, that. And shout out to Adidas that hooked us up too. Oh, Adidas had a little they, hand in that. They hooked us up, man. Wow. So, I mean, I, I was just kind of flabbergasted because I was like, this guy was just over here and you know, we, we jammed that just day. Chilling, yeah. We was just chilling and so I want to say that too because even when these big things happen for, for, for us out there, I always tell people if you remain humble, you know, it's so important to just, I mean, yeah, you're proud of your accomplishments, but when you remain humble, man, it's something to be really sad about that. So thank you so much, man, for coming through and blessing us that day. And you were like, Scooney, whatever you need, man, I got you. And so here you are today. We, we called you on short notice, so man, really appreciate you coming through and, and, and blessing us. And, uh, you're going to be playing the show tomorrow, I guess. Actually, yeah, I'll be on stage with Charlie Burrell, which is the main performer for tomorrow evening. Yes. And, man, just whoever's coming, you guys better come prepared. It's going to be nice. Google Charlie Burrell. Charlie Burrell. It, the rehearsal was sick. Uh -huh. We had a ball, man. We had a great time. I mean... The band is crazy. The band is crazy. Charlie's prepared and ready to go. And you remember what happened before we went in the studio? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That was the craziest thing. I I'm not going to say it because the kids are watching. The but. kids are watching, but geez. with G's. Geez. <laughs> Only in L.A. So I think I'll give a PG version. So I pull up in my van, and I darn near hit somebody crossing in the crosswalk. And Craig was standing out there with his eyes this big. <laughs> and let's just put it this way. You heard of the birthday suit? This she person was fully in her birthday suit. Fully in the birthday suit in downtown L.A. in the yeah. middle of the street. Walking. Walking. No, she was on the scooter. Oh, yeah, she was walking the scooter. She, she was walking the scooter. She wasn't on the scooter. So I, I was like, I've seen it all, but I had never seen that before. That was, yeah. Welcome to L.A. <laughs> so, again, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Craig. We'll see you tomorrow, man. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. I'll be playing. Scooney G's Daily Dose Podcast. Come on, y'all. Turn up. Who's with me? Uh. Yeah. Come on. Come on.